Hello, and welcome to the Street Crime UK YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Today we look at a notorious drugs gang who tortured two men during a horrific ordeal that lasted five hours. Sean O'Malley, who was from Orford, Billy McCall, who was from Latchford, and David Scurfield, who was from Burtonwood were all locked up for a combined total of 37 years over the brutal attack on their victims. The victims were threatened at gunpoint, tied up and attacked with weapons, including being attacked with axe and hammers during the brutal attack. Liverpool Crown Court heard that the victims, Darren Hall and Joshua Childs, were recruited by Scurfield to work in the cultivation and harvesting of cannabis on behalf of an organised crime group. In the weeks leading up to the incident, a crop had been stolen from the farm on at least one occasion. On a Friday evening on September the 11th, 2020, all three men and several others had been working at the industrial unit, which was located down a long country road off Arch Lane in Garswood and had locked away a stash of drugs in a shipping container before leaving and going to the pub. The trio and two other men returned to the site the following Monday, which was September the 14th, 2020, to discover that all the cannabis had been stolen. Mr. Scurfield made a phone call to an unidentified recipient, who Mr. Childs overheard saying, you owe us 30 grand now. Mr. O'Malley was then brought to the scene for the purpose of threatening and using extreme force in a bid to make the pair confess to being involved in the theft. Mr. O'Malley pointed a gun at the duo and threatened to shoot them and members of their family if they did not talk. This was before they were tied up with duct tape and brutally beaten. Mr. Hall and Mr. Childs were then struck with a range of weapons, including sledgehammers, claw hammers, and a metal wrench. At one stage, Mr. Hall was told to hold one of his fingers out so it could be severed off with a pair of shears, and he was also threatened with having a power drill being used on him. Mr. Scurfield and Mr. O'Malley then left before returning with Mr. McCall, who was carrying a container of liquid which he claimed was acid. He told the victims he would use the substance to inflict serious burns on their bodies. Mr. Hall was told that he would have it poured on his genitals and thrown all over his face. Mr. Hall was hit in the kneecaps with a hammer and struck in the legs with a pickaxe before the liquid, which is believed to have been either petrol or acid, was poured over the pair. Mr. McCall stubbed out a cigarette on an open wound that Mr. Childs had suffered, while Mr. Scurfield and Mr. O'Malley took Mr. Hall's house keys and ransacked his address. After the defendants left the unit, the two other cannabis farm workers, who had been ordered to wait outside the building, then bundled the injured men into a van and dropped them near Mr Hall's home on Crab Street in St Helens and called an ambulance. Overall, their ordeal lasted several hours and they were left fearing that they were going to die. Both men required surgery for their injuries, Mr Hall having sustained a broken left leg and a broken right forearm and Mr. Childs suffering a fractured left leg. Both remained in hospital for several days. On Thursday, October the 1st, 2020, police raided Mr. McCall's home on Henshaw Avenue. The officers who attended the address saw Mr. McCall throw an object out of the rear upstairs bedroom window, which was later found and was discovered to be a converted Olympus firearm. Mr. O'Malley was also to be sentenced for his part in a shooting which was carried out on behalf of Leon Cullen, formerly Warrington's most wanted man, where he had another man shot over a row with another organised crime group. On a Monday evening on September the 9th, 2019, Mr. O'Malley and co-conspirators Lewis Sinclair and Andrew Johannesson had met up at an address on Cumberland Street in Latchford, which was the home of Mr. O'Malley's partner, Annie Webster. This was before travelling to Mr. Johannesson's home in St. Helens, then onwards to Hinden Street in Bolton in a stolen Mercedes. Both Mr. O'Malley and Mr. Sinclair got out of the car dressed in all black with their faces covered, before Mr. Sinclair stopped at a gate of the house and fired six shots at a window and doors. Mr. Johannesson then drove the pair to Lee before changing vehicles to a BMW 
and continuing back to St. Helens. He had previously carried out the reconnaissance missions on targeted addresses, but was tracked by an electronic tag he was wearing as he did so. After the shooting was carried out, the loaded gun used in the attack, a Czech 9mm Parabellum self-loading pistol, and a quantity of low purity cocaine were planted in rival Craig Milliton's car during a meeting at the Populous Club in a bid to frame him. This was over a dispute that he and Mr. Cullen were having over a woman they were both previously involved with. An anonymous tip-off was then made to the police leading to Mr. Millington being arrested by armed police officers. Mr. Sinclair and Mr. Johannesson had earlier plotted together to break into lockers at David Lloyd gyms across the country, stealing items including car keys. Mr. O'Malley of Withers Road admitted two counts of inflicting grievous bodily harm with intent, two counts of false imprisonment, possession of a firearm with intent to cause fear, and violence and conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and was jailed for 18 years. Mr O'Malley, who was 33, had 8 previous convictions for 11 offences and was also handed an extended licence period of 5 years. Mr O'Malley was previously locked up alongside Mr Cullen in 2012 for 6 years having helped to organise his cocaine supply network before being caged again in 2017 for two years for further drug dealing offences. 20 year old Mr McCall, who had no previous convictions, pleaded guilty to two counts of inflicting grievous bodily harm with intent, two charges of false imprisonment and possession of a firearm and was handed 10 years. Appearing via video link, 33 year old Mr Skirfield of Sherwood Crescent admitted two counts of false imprisonment and a further two counts of inflicting grievous bodily harm with intent and was imprisoned for nine years. The cannabis farm manager had 11 previous convictions for 20 offences, including 18 months in prison for possession of class A drugs with intent to supply in 2006 and five months behind bars in 2009 for an assault causing actual bodily harm. Each of the defendants will have to serve up to two thirds of their custodial terms before being considered for release on licence by the parole board. Sentencing the trio, Judge David Swinterton said, The facts of all these offences reveal that you were all involved in serious organised crime. It is clear that the belief that Mr Childs and Mr Hall were involved in the loss of cannabis and Sean O'Malley was sent in as an enforcer. Mr O'Malley's role was to find out where the cannabis was and to frighten, terrorise, torture whilst they were tied up, helpless and vulnerable. They were systematically beaten. Threats were made to Mr Hall to drill holes in his body with a power drill. The level of threats made were absolutely terrifying and both men spent several hours believing that they were going to die. You Mr McCall were left in sole charge of them and you spent an hour continuing with the threat. You even went as far as to stub out a lit cigarette in an open wound of Mr. Childs. This was unnecessary and sadistic torture. I've no doubt that both men will have been psychologically harmed for life by the ordeal that they have been through. Turning to Mr. O'Malley's involvement in the shooting plot, the judge added, you don't need me to tell you what the dangers are of firing live ammunition in a street towards a house which is being occupied. That shooting was about trying to put the frighteners on people in that house as being an enforcer in organised crime. There was a deliberate attempt to frame a man for a very serious offence. The gunman, Mr Sinclair from Partington, and the getaway driver, Mr Johannesson, were both previously jailed for 12 years each at Bolton Crown Court after admitting conspiracy to possess a firearm with intent to cause fear and violence and conspiracy to commit burglary. Miss Webster, who was 26, was handed a two-year community order after pleading guilty to money laundering, having transferred thousands of pounds of Mr O'Malley's ill-gotten gains to the United Arab Emirates. 
His cache was discovered during Operation Longridge, a Greater Manchester Police investigation into serious organised crime, which was focusing on Mr O'Malley's activities. Miss Webster was present at the public gallery and wept as her partner was jailed. Mr Cullen, formerly of Honister Avenue in Orford, was locked up for 22 and a half years at Liverpool Crown Court after admitting conspiracy to supply firearms and cocaine. Mr Cullen had been on the run for nearly two years after being captured in Dubai in January 2020. Following sentencing, Merseyside Police Detective Phil Poynton said, This was a brutal and sustained attack which resulted in serious injuries, threats and was a deeply traumatic experience for both victims to go through. Our investigation has established that the dispute centred around alleged cannabis production from rival criminals. That this should have escalated to such extreme violence is beyond belief, and we're pleased to see these three dangerous men being removed from the streets for a very long time. The production, storage and supply of drugs can, in this case, lead to threats, violence and significant harm being used in the community. Cannabis use is far from being a victimless crime and this case is a stark reminder that when people buy drugs, even in small quantities, there exists a whole supply chain where organised criminals profit from the fear and misery that they spread. What are your opinions by the crimes committed by the drug scan? Do you believe the sentencing was too harsh or not harsh enough? Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and share. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoy Street Crime UK content, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell so you can join us on the next video. Thank you for joining us and until next time, stay safe.